Sinister Herd. While their proximity to each other may have forced them to be close, the interpersonal relationships among the Lara a dozen were rife with gossip, jealousy, and long-standing feuds. So when one of them went missing on December 16th, 2017, everyone became a suspect. For a town of only 12 people, there is so much information, there's so much backstory that when we talk about crime in a big city and that there's all these major players, oh, well, it's just a small town with only 12 people. If someone is murdered, surely someone would hear something, know something, be able to report it. It can go one of two ways. And it seems like either way is going to be super extreme. Mm -hmm. Either you get very tight-knit and close, almost too close, or... Mm -hmm everyone becomes each other's enemy and it's just this gossipy town where factions and grudges are held and nothing can be let go. And, but I mean, that's all you have, right? They live there and then they divorce, but they still live like within 10 feet of each other. And then you see them every day. Imagine you have to see your ex who you're on bad terms with every day. Yeah. Around 2008, Patty moved to Larima. He worked as a hand at the hotel slash pub, taking out trash, cleaning the bathrooms, and speaking to tourists in the role of an unofficial town concierge. In 2010, he bought a disused service station on the north side, just across from the town's Devonshire Tea House. This made him direct neighbors with the tea house's owner, Fran Hodgetts. Yeah, when he was described by uh, one of the search and rescue guys who would who serviced that area and knew him, he he was described as kind of like the Walmart greeter of the town. Mm-hmm. That he was just out there, and he's a uh, short in stature gentleman with a big thick mustache, always wearing a cowboy hat, always got a, a quadruple X gold like beer in his hand, and is like hey, everyone in the town has a beer in their hand all the time. In that documentary, it was truly, I mean, people would sit, get up off the cooler they're sitting on while yes, filmmakers are talking to them and be like, mind if I crack a cold one, mate? And just, I'm like, right there. <laughs> and that's the casualness of this yes. town. It's like, you want to talk to us? That's cool. But we're not going to change anything that we do. Yeah, it's like, this is how we do things around mm-hmm. here. What? what? And Patty, could, he was like that. He was just sitting at the same spot in the bar and could crack two whips at the same time. I bet he got such, I mean, I don't bet. You know he got such a kick out of the tourists watching him. Oh, yeah. And when Graham and Stevenson tracked down to a place he had worked near before, it was called the Heartbreak Hotel. It's like uh, about 400 miles away. And said, oh, yeah, well, he, they said while he was here, he was kind of the same, kind of a ranch hand, could help mow, water things. And that he got a real big kick out of taking a fake gun. And when busloads of Horace would drive up, he would jump on the bus and be like, all right, give me your wallet. <laughs> and they'd scream and he'd be like, oh, it's fake. Just and kidding. It's like, like kidding. God damn. <laughs> but they yeah. kept, they, everybody would be like, he's a larrikin. Ah, he's a larrikin, mate, which we had to look up. And it's a person who's like boisterous, kind of a bad boy, likes to tell. Kind of a lad yes. if, if, if you're uh, in the UK or what would that be in American terms? Um, Honestly, you know, I don't think frat boy because that's a bit different. Not a douchebag because he wasn't that. It was like he was a very colorful, cheeky character who was a bit mischievous. He liked yeah. he liked um to get into trouble. He liked to pull pranks. Oh yeah. But and then it starts to come out, oh yeah, he was a good good lad. Um but everybody, you know, also kind of hated him and he was, kind he was of a tired dick, of his though. shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh fuck. What so you you thought everybody was like cool with his antics, and then you're like Nah, I get it though, because if I had to be around the same person every day, all the time with no break, that was always having antics and pranks, that would drive me bananas. And you can't Uh, just drive into town because it's 400 kilometers away is the next town. So there's no escape unless you're like, well, I guess I'll just sit in my house by myself and seethe while the other 11 people go down to the pub. Uh, The type of folk that move out to a place like this are set in their ways and you can't convince them of other stuff. And then especially if somebody else that they fucking hate is trying to convince them of something, they're like, I'll stay longer. I'll die here right now just to show you. Oh, and yeah. I, the vibe is great. Dug in a lot of uh, dug in toxic feuds. But yeah, if you're kind of an outlaw, this is the type of place for you to be. And that's what they asked one of the police officers, the the investigators, like, oh, well, can you describe Larima's relationship with the police? And he's like, they don't really need us. They just 
He's like, they're just down there. They don't really call us for anything. Nothing really goes on in the 2011 interview. Or for- does it? And they yeah. just don't call you for anything <laughs> because they've all had a town meeting and decided we will handle this internally. It seems just like, hey, whatever. He was just like, they call us or they don't. And one of the guys said, well, in the 2011 interview footage, Carl, one of the guys that is, his family owned a couple of things and sold them off and stuff. But he said, well, there hasn't been a murder here or anything yet. And you're like, that's very prescient (laughs) and very eerie to look back at later Mm -hmm. because it's uh, when the town dwindles, when people's resources are gone, when their choices are gone, then they start to get forced into actions and behaviors that they might not otherwise take. It's a real Lord of the Flies situation. It's getting there. Known for her exotic meat pies, which according to Fran Hodgetts, put Laram on the map. The (laughs) tea... That was a good impression that of Fran Hodges. That was perfect. No, it was great. That was a great Fran Hodges impression. Um, we don't really quote her that much. So I was like, I'm going to put all my oomph into this. Well, one. You, you did it. You nailed it. Well, Fran was furious when pub owner Barry began selling his own meat pies. Fran was offended and felt Barry was in the wrong for inciting competition. Not a fan of Fran, Patty seemed to relish in her resentment fanning the flames whenever possible. Siding with his friend Barry, Patty began bad-mouthing Fran's pies to travelers passing through. He even went so far as to put a sign up at his house, encouraging tourists to spend their money at the pub rather than Fran's. As Patty lived across the street from Fran, this slap in the face was a daily reminder of her and Patty's tumultuous relationship. And if he's acting as the Walmart greeter of the town and he's kind of fun and Mm -hmm. charismatic when tourists come in and had you not been told by a, you know, a nice guy with a mustache and a couple of whips like, oh, yeah, you want the right pie, go to that one. You Mm -hmm. might go to hers. But because, you know, it was already kind of strange looking and you have this, you know, very charismatic character going, she's going to poison you with her pies, <laughs> which he would say. Or he'd go, there's dog shit in those pies. Oh. Or there's dead dog in those pies. And it's, it, to hear the cop go, well, nothing really goes on down in Laramie. It's like that you're being called about because <laughs> you then see what happens when everybody, and I'm not saying like, oh, they need a police station in Laramie, but it's sad to see, oh, man. You are all each other have. Like mm-hmm. you are, like you said, it's a family and you could choose to act like that. And maybe that's just the way of the bush. You know, yeah. it's things are wilder out there and people don't get as upset or things are, it's, yeah. it's wacky. These are, you know, yeah. we're all, these are just like wacky antics, but. It's a good way to put it. The wacky way of the antics bush. can also lead to a lot of real world problems. Real anger. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 